The definitive pre-release Pride Win tier list for Weathering Waves is here, gamers, and we are going to be taking a look at it today. See what they get right, what they get wrong. Of course, this is all from CBT, so this can obviously all fluctuate, surely, right? But I'll be giving my thoughts and opinions on basically everyone from this list here. Are, are they good? Or do, they, do they belong on the list where they're at? Or do I think they're worse or better? So we're going to be going over all of the criteria first because this is a new tier list for Pride Win, being Weathering Waves, a new game and everything like that so we're gonna go over all the criteria first and then we're gonna get into the characters and talk about how I think they're going to work or just be good in general for the game right so let's go ahead and hop into your first about this tier list and it looks like they've already changed some stuff up here judging from this first section obviously they're gonna be taking knowledge from CBT1 and CB2 and they're also having some players Rex Lint, notably is going to be helping out here didn't he look so cute in his little cosplay I think he did anyways guys uh, yeah so one thing they did add on Pride one already guys go check out pride one if you haven't already i'll leave a link to pride one down in the description down below it's they're normally pretty accurate i have some disagreements with the honkai star world tier listing but what they have done guys is for these characters let's take jinyan for example if you go to the review section it'll actually give you pros and cons for each character which i think comes in really big clutch i don't even think they do this for honkai star world let me check Can I be, am i wrong oh they do i'm just dumb anyways i think the pros and cons section is pretty good that they add in here it allows players to see what's good and what's bad with a, with a character but one thing i do think they should change is when you hover over the character I think it should show you like a short pros and cons list on like the little character pop-up screen here I feel like there's a lot of dead space that they could definitely use like maybe adjust the five-star arrow broad blade over to the right of Jinyon then put a pros and cons list right there to see kind of like the pros and cons from here instead of having to click through this and then going to all the way to the review tab to see the pros and cons that that's just a small gripe but let's go ahead and talk about the criteria and categories here or about this tier list first so tower of adversity which which is the in-game mode in Weathering Waves, guys. They are going to be basing it off of that. They're basically saying why they're using Tower of Adversity over holograms here, which, I mean... It is the in-game mode. I think I, I do agree with TOA being the benchmark for the actual grading of the tier, tier list here. And then skill ceilings as an action combat game. Weathering Waves offers many combat options to players, some of which are not easily executed, but boost certain characters' powers substantially. The switch cancel is an example of this technique, allowing you to switch out of characters mid-attack for a new character while still fully executing the move you interrupted. So basically, they're taking skill canceling and more mechanical skills into account here. So let's go ahead and see the criteria here so the criteria here will be best utilized on a three-man team optimal without mistakes well okay guys let's 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 be honest here there there could be a lot of mistakes happening here okay but yeah i think it is best to judge off of no mistakes. i feel like there should be a judge off of some mistakes because i don't think no mistakes is going to be reasonable for probably 70 percent of the players maybe even 80 percent of the players in my opinion but Let's continue here. Using the best Echo main set. Yeah, I think of uh, judging from the Relic sets and stuff like that's a very good benchmark. But I don't think using it without mistakes is an optimal way to view things. That's just my opinion on that though. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. All characters using the maximal level gold rarity echoes. Good to hear. All echo main sets are considered best in slots. That's fine. Each echo used by characters is assumed to have a five substat with average rolls. Half of the substats 12 are designated as good substats. The characters would desire where the remaining 13 are random. This represents good but not insane in gear. Now, this is something that I have been advocating for on the... Uh, they might do it on the Honkai Star World tier list now. I... I couldn't tell you off the top of my head right now. I could check, but I'm lazy. Anyways, uh, I do think having a designated like 50% like good piece, not like a full sin good piece, is a good benchmark, and I do like them doing this. And this is really big. All characters here are graded at sequence level zero. I know for like Honkai Star Rail, they grade all of the four stars at sequence, or I guess Eidolon six or whatever. But I, uh, they're changing in the future, obviously here. But this is really big. Also, they'll be grading all the weapons off of S1 of all the four star weapons, and all the two to three star weapons will be. I guess max super imposition or whatever syn syn synchronization I think is what it's called so yeah they'll be grading all of that as well and then obviously you know all the characters here will be graded off their max level 4T level everything like that as well max weapon, weapon level because that's something you can get for free in the game you know we know a little bit about the roles already because we take a look at the chart down here they're doing main DPS hybrid and support roles uh, let's see main DPS obviously is going to be how much damage they're going to do so the criteria that's going to affect main DPS is character rotations difficulty 
and potential for mistakes, character damage within best possible team, characters on field flexibility and durability, can they easily dodge during combo, will they die in one hit, characters ability to deal damage with all damage types, single target, cleave, and AoE, with a bias towards single target being valued more. I like this grading system a lot. I think grading characters off the potential for mistakes is super, super big here. Putting them lower on the list, if you can make an easy mistake with them, I think that is pretty good to have there because I think a lot of people will probably make mistakes in this game because it is a very combat-oriented game. So I think that's a good scale to, to actually grade that off of. Now, I probably would have like a star. If you're like really cracked, guys, this character can be god tier. I, I Maybe something like that with the descriptions, but yeah. Hybrid characters would I'm interested in because I already know what main DPS and supports would to do. But hybrid characters, I would assume they're just a mix between DPS and support characters. And what it says here is hybrid characters directly support your main damage dealer of choice, often with incredibly synergistic kits, specialized outro buffs like deepen multipliers or other benefits effects almost always built to complete their rotation right before your main dps performs their full damage combo hybrid characters kits. hybrid character kits offer a diverse combination of supportive offensive and sustaining capabilities and possess the most variety in gameplay and have many different niches hybrid characters also prioritize generating their concerto resonance energy and getting their buffs up in as little on field time as possible i mean yeah that's pretty much what i thought it would be but let's go ahead and look at these criteria now so first of all characters rotation difficulty and potential for mistakes, character performance within the best possible team, how many effective teams is this character playable in, impact of a kit on the team performance, impact of kit on team performance, units that carry a team rank higher, characters on field flexibility and durability, characters effective damage contribution after including the buffs on the team, total on field time required to perform action. So that's pretty self-explanatory there. I think that's a pretty good rating. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know how much better it can get right now. Obviously, we're going to have to wait until everyone gets their hands on the game, and then we can get a real good grasp of what these characters should actually be graded off of. But I feel like the really important one here is total on-field time required to perform the action because the more time these sub-DPS or sub hybrid characters are on the field means the less damage your actual DPS is going to be doing, which means the more time it's going to take to actually complete things, which is a very big factor in this game because there are time trial-based things things in this game so being able to complete things really really fast is going to be good and as far as the supports tags are concerned they are the exact same as the the hybrid characters right guys so let's go ahead and hop into tags now i almost went ahead and scammed you guys they're also going to be special tags just like you see in hsr if you played honkai star rail there are tags if we take a look at miss yin lin here she has aoe cancel and coordination so let's go ahead here and take a look at this all right guys so taking a look just at the special tags here i mean most of these are pretty self-explanatory single target cleave aoe Heal, shield, coordination is a fun one though because basically it tells you how consistently you can perform a coordinated attack with the rest of the team. Multi-roll means they can be used in many alternative different ways. Cancel, if the character needs to be able to cancel abilities, you having to have more technical skill to play the character. Hard characters, these are the skill issue character guys, okay? Skill, very skill issue character, okay? And risk, meaning uh, you're going to have to play it on the line to get damage off of these characters. So guys, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop into our tier list now starting off with support first Verena is in t0 gamers now do i agree with Verena being in t0 absolutely uh Verena's cracked okay Verena is the best support in the game i think by far i do think these uh i do think all of the roles right now for support role are pretty good honestly i do think Verena is a mile ahead of whatever Bizy can do not gonna lie guys Verena is just so cracked for right now in the game. She is that bitch. She is ahead of the curve. She is ahead of the game. Now, let's go ahead and talk about Miss Baizu being here. Baizu being here, she is really good at her role of supporting. As far as Baizu, Yang Yang, and also, I'm not even going to try to pronounce her name, uh, Tao Chi, Tao Chi goes. Uh, as far as how I'd rate them, as I do think that Baizu is ahead of the curve on them. She does provide healing for the team. It's... She's just pretty kind of go to with the sauce compared to these other characters, especially being in that support role. Honestly, I, me personally, I don't see Yang Yang that much of a support. I would honestly, the, now the energy she does give is pretty nice, but if I were to say, I would probably put uh, Tao Chi at, in the same tier as her. I don't think that there is much difference. I don't think there's a mile of difference in between these two right here that I could honestly say to put one on a tier below than the other. Now, obviously, if we're comparing the, those two characters to Baizi, I think Baizi in the support role has a better chance here. 
So me personally, I would probably obviously have Varane at the top, skip a whole tier 0 0.5 here, put Baizi here, have Yang Yang and also Tao Chi uh, right here in tier 2 together. I really wouldn't put her down here at the bottom, but that, that's just how the cards are played, I guess. Right now, hybrid. First of all, Miss Yinlin. Okay, I love Yinlin, okay? Yinlin is hot, she's sexy, and she surely gets the job done. That's why she's in tier 0. I can agree with her being in tier 0. Now, she does have... You need skill cancels to actually make her work effectively, meaning she could be a skill issue type character. But even with that debuff on Pride Win Serialist, she's up high. And I absolutely agree with her. She works so well with Mr. Calcharo, our boy, our god, our king. Calcharo here, gamers. Yeah, I, I think that Cal Calcharo and her just work like a match made in heaven on the same team. You run Calcharo, Yinlin, and also Verena on the same team together, you're going to absolutely pop off. So yes, I do see her being there. Also, she has a lot of off-field damage as well, which can be really, really nice. So that's why she's up here. Now, hopping into Morteffi at T0.5. Yeah, I can agree with uh, Morteffi being tier 0 0.5. Now, there's something down here. I don't know if I agree with Mr. Uh, Yan Wu, but we'll get into him in a second here. Now, hopping into tier 1, Rover and Sanhua. Yeah, I can see them being together. Now, this is also uh, S6 Rover as well. Sanhua is a kind of a hard character to play, guys. So, uh, yeah, I can see her being here. I honestly don't think that she competes with Morteffi, so I, I can see her being there. Now, let's hop into tier 2. Miss Gian's down here. No, why is she down here? Do I think that Gion is this bad? No. I do think she's a jack of all trades, a master of none type character. I don't think, you know, I don't know. Oh, man, maybe she is. Like, actually thinking about it? I wouldn't rate her this low just because she does do a lot of stuff. She's like a Gwenaifen situation for me, right? If, you're, if you played Honkai Star Rail, she's very similar to Gwenaifen to me. Gwenaifen does so good in so many roles, but she doesn't excel very good at any of those roles. She works in those roles well, but she just doesn't do the damage, right? So, I, maybe? I kind of agree with this, actually. Yeah, I kind of agree with this, actually. Yeah, okay. Um, Yeah, I... It's, uh, man, that's cringe. N now, Yan Wu. Now, let me let me click on him real quick. Why do they have him here? What are the pros and cons with Yan Wu that they have listed here? Is there no pros and cons here? Oh, his pros and cons aren't listed yet. Oh, no. Why? That's okay, gamers. We're just going to talk about him really quick. I do not think Yan Wu is this low. I think they're absolutely sleeping on my boy here. His damage output might not be the best thing, but I will say... I do think he deserves to be in at, at, at least T1. If not, I think he could even be in T0.5 with how good he can actually work on a team with Miss Yinlin and uh, Verena as well. Say you didn't get Calcharo, right? Calcharo arguably could be a hard character to play. I don't personally see him as a hard character to play. I think he's pretty straightforward, honestly. I think they're kind of sleeping my boy here. Uh, I, me personally... He seems pretty easy to play. He doesn't seem like that hard of a character to play to me. But I do see Mr. Mr. Yan Wu here being at a place where if you didn't have Calcharo, he's a very, very good replacement for Calcharo on this team. Now, like I said, maybe don't put him on T0.5 because we do have Calcharo on T0.5, even though it, that is the main DPS role. I think he could go at least Tier 1. I don't think that he is down here in the gutters at Tier 2. But I also don't think he can make... I don't, I don't think he can compete with T0.5, especially if we're comparing him to the likes of Calcharo. I just think Calcharo is better on the team than Mr. Yan Wu is. So for that reason, I would move him up to Tier 1. That's just my opinion on that. And finally, Alato. Oh, that's my Gojo-looking boy right there. They did him dirty, but I mean... They're not wrong. Um, they're not wrong. I'll probably be playing him because I like him a lot. He's Gojo-coded for sure. But, yeah, I can see him being down here. Now, let's hop into the DPS tier list, guys. Uh, yeah, Gion. Yeah, Gion's going to be T0. I, I don't know what to say. The game's just coming out. I don't know how you would expect the two feature five-star units or the first two ones not to be T0. That's like saying that Jin Yuan wasn't going to be T0 or Zelo wasn't going to be T0 as soon as they release. So, yeah, I mean, both of these characters are absolute mad lads. Yeah, deserves to be in T0. Now, T0.5. Do you disagree with something here? I don't think the Encore is T0.5. I think she's a really easy character to build in terms of how much you put into her and how much you get back from her. Now, the damage cap, I, I don't see it being all that much there. Personally, let me see the pros and cons that they have with her, and then maybe that'll better assess my opinion on her. I I'm curious to see what they say here, right? Cons. Currently, there's no perfect hybrid character that can empower her unique playstyle. Yep, okay. 
pretty much agree with that there. Finish your off rotation with a matchup charge heavy attack. Yep, I um, mean, cannot parry wall and non ultimate the face yeah so she has a pet sheep that's a pro guys pet sheep does get her one position up on pride wins tier list but honestly for my tier list guys i would probably move her down to tier one i think dajin is a absolute man honestly i would probably move Jin up to t0.5 i would move encore down move Jin up i think Jin, even though they are a hard character to play even though they're a risky character to play the lower the hp the more damage you i think she is god tier okay guys or maybe it's just me being too hard on like players i guess i like i said i agree with their tier list like rating system and how they're rating everything I think that Donjin does deserve to be up here. If we take hard and risky out of the equation here, I think we move Encore down. I think we move Donjin up. That's my opinion on that, though. Now, finally here, uh, Chixia and also Ling Yang. Now, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't put hard here. Because that motherfucker's hard as fuck to control in his ultimate state, okay? Uh, I'm pulling for him. That's the fire star that I'm aiming for, Mr. Ling Yang here. Uh, me personally, that's who I'm going for. I think Tiger Boy pops the absolute shit off. And you know, a video on like what best five star you should pull for will be up on the channel later today in the pull priority list. So make sure you check that video out and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But yeah, I mean, overall here, I think I would move Donjin up and move Encore down. I think Encore is great and all, but I do think Donjin has a better DPS output than what Miss Encore can do. Now, with that being said, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed, if you liked our tier list, let me know your thoughts on Pride Wins tier list here. It's up. It's available for you to see, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Anyways, gamers, that's going to do it for today's video. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're going to be doing some Weathering Waves giveaways. We're going to be doing some Weathering Waves echo farming together in the Discord, so make sure you join that. And that's going to really do it for today's video, gamers. Thank you for watching. I will catch you in the next one, and let me know your thoughts for real, for real. I would love to know them, honestly. Anyways, guys, bye. See you later.